Hello everybody, in today's video, story time with Sean, I'm going to read about the witch, cra the witch hunts that happened in America before Salem. Uh, what many people don't know since there was a witch hunt about 30 years before Salem. I use my phone, uh, History Channel website. Well, the, anyway, before Salem, the first spirit witch hunt. Which, of course, everybody knows Salem, one of the most famous cases of witch hunts that happened throughout history in the United States, obviously, and throughout the world, one of the most well-known cases. It says here, 30 years before the infamous Salem witch trials, America's first witch hunt hysteria struck through another colonial New England town to find out about the accusations of trials that rattled Hartford, Connecticut in 1662. In late March 1662, John and Bethia Kelly grieved over the body of their eight-year-old daughter inside their Hartford, Connecticut home. Uh, little Elizabeth had been fined just days before when she returned home with neighbor, good wife with heirs. The distraught parents grasping at any explanation for their loss saw the hand of the devil at work. The parents were convinced, well, of course, obviously, at that time, no child could die from anything, really, to be perfectly honest. The parents were convinced that Elizabeth had been fatally possessed by goody heirs. The, uh, Kelly's testified that their daughter first took ill the night after she returned home with her neighbor, and that she said, Father, Father, help me, help me. Good wife Ayers is upon me. She chokes me. She kneels on my belly. She will break my bowels. She pinches me. She will make me black and blue. After Elizabeth's death, accusations of bewitchment flew and fingers were pointed at numerous townspeople. Hysteria gripped hard for a town that a generation before it witnessed the first execution of a suspected witch in the American colonies, Alice. Alice Young of Windsor, Connecticut, was sent to the gallows erected at Hartford's uh, Meeting House Square, now the site of Connecticut's old state house, on May 26, 1647. Witchcraft was one of 12 capital punishments decreed by Connecticut's colonial government in 1642. The legal precedent cited by the devoutly Puritan colonists was of a divinely higher order. Biblical passages such as Exodus 22:18, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, in Leviticus 20:27, 20, a man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. After Young's public hanging, at least five other Connecticut residents met a similar fate. However, it was at Hartford in 1662, 30 years before the infamous Salem witch trials, that a witch hunt series took hold, resulting in seven trials and four executions. Shortly after Elizabeth Kelly's death, the pious Anne Cole suddenly became afflicted, shaking violently and spouting blasphemy. According to one contemporary account, Cole was taken with strange fits wherein she, or rather the devil, as his judge, making use of her lips, held a discourse for a considerable time. Cole blamed her bewitchment on her neighbor Rebecca Greensmith, described by one townsperson as a lewd, ignorant, considerably aged woman, and others already suspected of witchcraft in the Kelly case. The accused began to accuse others and even their spouses of being the true witches. In what became a vicious circle, neighbor began testifying his neighbors. Uh, Goody Ayers' husband, perhaps in an attempt to save his wife, joined in the course of Greensmith's accusers. The most damning testimony supposedly came from Greensmith herself, who reportedly admitted to having familiarity with the devil, and said that at Christmas they would have a merry meeting to form a covenant. Greensmith implicated her husband and said she had met in the woods with seven other witches, including Goody Ayers, Mary Sanford, and Elizabeth Steger. Now, those who may be asking, well, what does it mean by familiarity with that? What can mean anything? It's a pact with the devil, a sexual union that happened with the devil, one night stand, if you will. It could mean, it, it means many, many things. Uh, neighbors testified that they saw a seeger dancing with other women in the woods and cooking mysterious concoctions in black kettles. Two of the suspects, likely the Greensmiths, were subjected to the swimming test, in which their hands and feet were bound and they were cast into the water to test the theory that witches are unable to sing. After they were tried, the Greensmiths were indicted for not having the fear of God before thine eyes. Thou hast entertained familiarity with Satan, the grand enemy of God, and mankind and by his help hast acted things in a preternatural way. The court's verdict, according to the law of God and the established law of this commonwealth, thou deservest to die. Deservest to die. Rebecca Greensmith had confessed in open court. Nathaniel Greensmith had protested his innocence. But they both met the same fate, the noose. 
Sanford was also sent to the gallows after their executions. Cole reportedly was restored to hell. Heirs fled Hartford while Seeger was finally convicted of witchcraft in 1665, although the governor reversed the verdict the following year. Mary Barnes of Farmington, Connecticut, was also swept up in the region's witch hunt and executed alongside the Greenspan. The four executions of suspected witches in Hartford were to be Connecticut last. Another hysteria broke out in Fairfield, Connecticut in 1692, but none of these or those convicted met death. Connecticut held its final witch trial in 1697, a half century after Alice Young's execution. During that period, there were 46 prosecutions and at least 11 executions. Descendants of some of those 11 colonists are seeking posthumous pardons and apologies similar to those that occurred in Massachusetts for victims of the Salem witch trials. Previous resolutions in the Connecticut legislature, however, have not come out of committee, and the state's Board of Pardons and Paroles also has a policy of not granting posthumous pardons. The descendants are now gr uh, pressing for a gubernatorial proclamation to clear the names of their ancestors. And this was posted October 31, 2012, so who knows if they were successful or not. But, yeah. Um, that's pretty much the witch trial. The witch trials were pretty much just hysteria. It, you know, someone maybe had an actual affliction, an actual sickness. And, obviously, med the medical world, the medical study of medicine was not as advanced as it is today. So, for instance, you could have epilepsy, you could have a seizure... And they wouldn't know it's epilepsy, they would just say it's the word of the devil. Um, and, you know, all they have to do is, who, it pretty much is how it would amount to is, who do we not like, who do we not trust, who is the most strangest or the weird, or who doesn't fit in around here, and we could throw them under the bus, pretty much. And that's what happened. And later on down, when people said, it was more like mass hysteria after that. Someone might have had an actual affliction in the beginning, the very first stages of this, and someone saw, and then all of a sudden, they became convinced they have it, and they'd start having seizures and whatnot. And then always conveniently, it'd be some neighbor that they happened to have been feuding with, or some neighbor that they didn't agree with, or some neighbor that they thought you know, didn't fit in, or they didn't want them around, or whatnot. Or, you know, or maybe they were after their land, which is what some of the people, some people speculate was one of the driving factors behind the Salem Witch Trials, is the fact that they could easily accuse someone, that person would be executed for being, for being a witch, and that land would pretty much be open, because that they wouldn't give that land, because if, especially if the person didn't have a family, or if they didn't have direct relatives in the area, that land was pretty much open after that person was killed. Their land was open, their stuff was open. You know, fair game. But yeah, there's people that do practice witchcraft, but it's nothing like what's been made out in, in the mass media about witches or Wiccans or, you know, the practice of Wicca or witchcraft. People call it witchcraft, it's technically actually Wicca, but there are people that are that do practice dark magic, but I'm not sitting there and saying that it will cause people to become like the, what happened with Salem. You know, what people attributed to Salem being witchcraft, which is actually, if you ask me, just a mixture of those first cases having someone who has actually had some kind of condition that led to them acting the way that they did. And then after that mass hysteria, where people just jumped on the bandwagon, if you will, to try to accuse people of witchcraft for ulterior motives. Um, but yes, anyway, thank you for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys later. Goodbye.